what do we do in our daily lives? What we do mostly is we deal with complexity. And there are two kinds of complexities we have to deal with. One is inherent complexity, and the other is accidental complexity. Inherent complexity is the complexity from the problem domain. There is nothing you can do about it. When you're dealing with the problem, there are complexities of the problem you have to deal with. And this is the nature of the application, nature of the domain, and you have to deal with it. But fortunately or unfortunately, most of what we deal with on our daily basis is not that inherent complexity that we deal with as much. It's what we deal with is the accidental complexity. Accidental complexity often comes from the solution that we use to solve a particular problem. The solution we are using brings certain complexities into the, into the uh, table, and what do we do from there? To solve that complexity, we bring other solutions. Those solutions bring more complexity, and we get dragged into this vicious cycle very quickly, and becomes really, really hard. If you want some examples of accidental complexity, there is one we all can immediately share and think about, which is concurrency. Now think of concurrency for a minute. The application may or may not need concurrency, but the minute you bring concurrency, what do you do? You start threads. Oh great, I've got threads running, what do I do now? I want to make sure the threads do not collide with each other and start corrupting data. I've got to make sure there's no race condition in code. You start putting constructs around, like locks and synchronization. And now what happens? The code is doing a lot of stuff to keep the concurrency in place and put with all all that code in place, every time we walk in to change the code, it becomes a lot more expensive to change the code as well. But where did that come from? That's an accidental complexity. The problem did not require this particular solution. It's a solution we chose to solve the problem. And if we step back and say, hey, maybe I should really think of a different solution rather than this particular problem, maybe that's a better solution. And it doesn't have these consequences of locks and synchronization. Maybe that's a better way to handle this problem. That's one question to ask. The other question to ask is, how many times do we really ask the question, what problem am I really trying to solve? And sometimes we don't even have this problem, and yet we perceive that we have this problem, and then we tend to really put solutions around it. That becomes extremely hard as well.